Hey, this is Eternal King here. Um, so I wanted to bring you my own off-meta uh, standard deck, and it was at one point, again, a, a very strong standard deck. And that's true of a lot of the deck lists that I play, is that I will take, um, I will play decks that have kind of fallen out of popularity or were popular at one point in a format, and then kind of bring them back, tweak them, make them my own, and then run them on competitive ladder. So this is Illoy Jarvan. It's uh, one of the few standard decks that I like because it's exceptionally high synergy and it's exceptionally easy to level up champions. And those are both things that I like quite a bit in, in, in a game while also being reactive enough to uh, count as a proper mid-range shell. So three Watchful Idol. Watchful Idol was nerfed pretty massively because it deserved to be. And uh, now it only spawns twice uh, per one drop. That being said, in a spawn deck, you still need it. You can't really get around using it. Uh, Answer Prayers is a three of. Uh, you either spawn two or you spawn four, depending on the amount of mana you want to spend. Um, very flexible card in, in this shell. Eye of God as a one of, um, pretty much mandatory. Um, again, keeping it as a one of, this is a deck that's very dependent on its ratioing to be competitive. And uh, some decks aren't. Some decks are just auto three ofs and, and then you're done. This is a case of a deck that needs its ratioing. So one Eye of God, uh, you can stick it on a lot of units to just get free infinite spawn value, but running more than one makes no sense. Because you're going to want to be on Answer Prayers, which does the same thing. Um, but again, is more flexible because it uh, uh, enables you to open pass into certain decks and things like that. You know, um, it is much more valuable than Eye of God, uh, usually. Um, form up, again, best combat trick in Standard, and also the best combat trick in Eternal for Demacia. Uh, one Hired Gun. So Hired Gun is an MVB card in this deck. Um, it allows you to, for example, kill a Teemo for free if someone's memeing with traps. It allows you to kill a Battlesmith for free if someone's playing Elites. Uh, that one of play uh, is so exceptionally powerful. And then the question might be, why don't you run more of them? Well, because it is a card that you can only get that value once, right? It is the uh, on-curve counter, where you get to control someone out, auto-level the um, Jarvan uh, for one point, remove the on-tempo threat or the kind of steamrolly kind of card that they're playing uh, on the low mana cost, and then, and then you know, trade up into it. And so you just run the one copy, but when that card comes down, man, your opponent's going to feel it. Um, in a standard format where there's, you know, again, less types of interaction. Uh, Petrocyte Broadwing, again, don't have to explain this. Um, I'm actually pretty heavy into Petrocyte Broadwing in the Illoy Jarvan deck. I actually lean into the synergy more than just with Form Up, and you'll see that in a second, but this is pretty important in an Illoy Jarvan deck. Um, because at the end of the day, you can't just win off of the, uh, you know, the, the, the Tentacle and Illoy in an Illoy Jarvan deck. Um, it's just not enough. So you need something else that can stick and trade up into a lot of things. A lot of mid-rangey threats, a lot of mid-range beater decks. This will this is the key card for that. Uh, single combat as a one of. Um, pretty important to have that flexibility. Uh, when your opponent tries to remove something, you remove their thing for cheaper. It's it's very important to have one single combat for any competitive player in a Demacia shell. Cataclysm as a one of because uh, when you get the free attack with the Illoy, um, that's very, very powerful. That's potentially game winning, and it's almost like a free rally for what you're looking for, for one mana less. So it's a three mana rally in the Illoy Jarvan deck because you only care about swinging with the Illoy uh, most of the time. Shield of the Durand as a three of. This is the secret sauce that I run in this deck, and it's exceptionally powerful. It moves cards like Illoy out of lethal range of certain burn cards um, and certain removal cards. It also uh, messes up the math on trades. It also makes it so that your Petrocyte Broadwing can't die. Um, I've even been known to run uh, play Shield of Duran on something like a Watchful Idol to get extra value there. You can play it on a Hired Gun, if, only in the aggro matchup where you def desperately need that tempo to preserve life total. So it's an it's MVP, MVP card in this deck. Um, I believe that the competitive version that kind of Majin put on Mastering of Runeterra of my deck, um, you know, that was top of standard for a while. I did not run Shield of Durand, and it was more strike heavy. And I, I'm sure at the time, that was the tech, and that was the way to do it. But, like, it, Shield of Durand is such an important part of my deck that I don't know why you'd ever drop it. Uh, Tentacle Smash, again, amazing kind of mid-rangey removal card. And that's one of the reasons why I think you can go lighter on the single combats and the Cataclysms, is that you're also running Tentacle Smash, right? Which is another type of strike card. Sea's voice is a three of. Obviously, you need your tentacles to be have overwhelm. Um, Illoy, uh, again, learning how to keep Illoy alive is so important 
for this deck. I would say that the only difference between a good Illoy player and a bad Illoy player is their ability to keep Illoy alive. Hence the Shields of Durant, and uh, on top of the normal form up. Because again, if your Illoy dies, you don't really have a deck anymore. Um, this is a high synergy champ focused deck. You need to keep those champs alive. And sometimes the right call is keeping the Sea's Voice alive as well. Playing Shields of Durand on that. Um, if you need that Overwhelm as the win con. So lots of flexibility there. Uh, because people are running a lot of ramp right now. And people are teching much bigger than they used to. I'm even going to run two of, of Search Warrants. This is a card you don't see very often. But then this is Standard. And Standard doesn't have um, Concerted Strike. You would much rather be on Concerted Strike 100% of the time. But you can't run Concerted Strike in this deck. So I'm going to run the two of, of Search Warrant which is going to allow my Illoy um, or my Tentacle to potentially capture something that is very problematic. Um, but again, you, my, you know, my Illoy Jarvan deck is very spell focused, so it's going to get blown out by something like uh, Deathless um, Inquisitor, which is the top standard deck right now. So again, that's the problem with being off meta is that the meta decks are going to get you. Of course, Deathless Inquisitor being off meta at one point, um, but now it will very much be meta. It will be everywhere. You'll see it everywhere. It's a very good deck by Mogwai. Um, Buru Lookout, of course, big tempo play. This is kind of what saves the deck um, into mid-range beater shells and, and, and kind of other aggro decks and, and, and you know, elites and all that stuff. You need Buru Lookout as a 3 of. I have Nakaboros. I'm running it as a 2 of for draw. Again, it's going to allow you to draw into things that you need and proper, you know, answers and stuff like that. Good card. Jarvan, obviously, auto levels on this deck all the time, and that's why I run Shield of the Duran, because, again, it, you don't level Jarvan unless your stuff survives swings. And you need to swing to apply pressure, and you also need to swing to, to apply spawn to, you know, potentially level up your Illoy. So all of those things work exceptionally well together, and they need to work in tangent, you know, kind of in combination. Rakuko Boros, I run as a two of. Um, increasingly, I am disappointed with this card in Standard. Um... I'm feeling more and more that this just isn't getting things done. So, you know, if there's ever uh, a big spawn card that is released in the future for this shell, um, it might replace Nakagoboros because, again, it's just not quite getting there. But uh, you still run it anyway because you don't really have anything else to run in, 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 in that slot. Um, but yeah, this is kind of just a fun, quick, you know, five-second uh, deck overview of Illoy Jarvan, kind of where it is in the meta um, currently, you know, what happens to these top standard decks uh, after the dust settles and, and months and months and seasons go by? And also, you know, are these, uh, you know, off-meta decks that became meta and are off-meta again, are, are, are they still viable? And I would say, yeah, you can, you can run some games with this on ladder and you'll blow a lot of people out. As long as it isn't like a Mordekaiser deck, which is a hard counter, um, you'll be fine. So this is Eternal King signing out, just kind of uh, providing you an update on one of my old decks that was uh, quite popular for, you know, a heartbeat, which is typically how um, LOR standard goes. Decks have their time in the sun, and then, and then that time passes. Uh, this is Eternal King signing out.